aquí, ¿verdad? A ver, más o menos. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I hit the button a little early this morning, just about it. Well, maybe 30 seconds early, not too early. How are you? How are you? Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Morning, Don Clark. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. So good to see you. Hope you had an amazing weekend. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Welcome, welcome. How are you? How are you? We are good getting started today. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to everyone who will be on live and Good morning to everyone who will watch the replay. I want to invite you to like and share so that we can continue to get our self-love message out, right? This is the message God has given me. I don't know everything. There's so much more to learn, but I do invite you on the learning and growth process. I invite you to keep growing, to keep expanding, to keep increasing in your self-love. If there is anything that's worthy of our attention, that's worthy of our energy, that is worthy of our time, self-love is certainly it. So I invite you to continue to grow and expand in your self-love. Good morning, Devera L. Robinson. Happy Monday to you too, dear. Happy Monday. So good to see you. And we are going to get started this morning. I'm welcoming everyone. It's uh, a privilege to talk to you, to to have your time, to spend time together. How many know that we are like so tremendously blessed to get to have an opportunity to stop at the beginning of the day, to start our day thinking about how amazing it is to rise each morning, how wonderful it is to have freedom of breath, right? The freedom to make decisions, the freedom. Good morning, good morning, dear. Up getting ready for surgery this morning. Uh, Hey, honey, so good to see you a million times. I said I need to call you. Okay, you're getting ready for surgery. Oh, okay, so I didn't get to talk. What time? Mm, all right, I'm going to follow up. I'm going to follow up. Maybe I'll follow up with Lisa um, to um, check in on you. Sending love your way, sir. Love your way. Um, thank you for signing in. Good morning, Letitia. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Sending blessings to you, Al. Sending blessings, blessings for God's presence, blessings for healing and wholeness, blessings for peace in your spirit and in your mind. Um, a Daniel's anointing for everybody involved. A Daniel's anointing. Um, I love you, love you, love you, love you, love, love you. Sending much love your way, sir. Much love your way. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And so, as we this morning, we're going to have conversations. Good morning, Sherry Naylor. Good morning. Good morning. I think it's um cohort day. So we got Al, we got Letitia, we got Sherry. <laughs> All we need is Sati to come on in here. Then we're gonna have cohort day, right? Um, and so so wonderful to see you guys. So wonderful. Good morning, brother. Lifting you in prayer. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. you're all gonna. All lift Al in prayer this morning. We definitely all want to lift him up in prayer. Amen, amen, amen. So this morning, this morning, this morning, and I'll keep bouncing back in to the chat. I want us to think about habits, right? Think about habits. Today we're talking about this notion of habits. Yes, thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. Um, 
the small decisions that we make and the actions we perform every day, those are our habits. The small decisions we make and the actions we perform every day, those are our habits. Andrea, good morning. So good to see you, my sister. So good to see you. So good morning, Tanya. Good morning, sis. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Hey, Sherry. Good, 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 good. Small decisions we make and the actions we perform every day. The small decisions we make and the actions that we perform every day, those are, um, they become our habits. So what are the small decisions that we make? And what are the actions that we take every day? Those right there become our habits. And our habits, you know, become our life. And so we want to make sure that we look at the small decisions that we make every day. What are those decisions, beloved? Because our life is essentially the sum of our habits. Our life is essentially the sum of our habits. And so it's, it's interesting because I've made um, this commitment. I've made this commitment to myself to be down this sides by, by my birthday. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. Um, good morning, Joy. Good morning. I've made this commitment to be down a full size by my birthday. And it's getting close, right? It's getting close, right? It is, it's getting close. And I'm like, okay, Kathy, you're going to have to do something different. In order to meet that goal, you're going to have to do something different. And it's interesting. So, um, and I tell you guys all the time, I teach this, but it doesn't mean that I am not without need of it. I teach this because I need it. That is really why I teach it. It's why it gets so much of my attention. It's why it gets my energy because this is what I, well, everything I teach, I have to use for myself in order to become the best version of me. So I'm not teaching this from any lofty place, right? I'm not teaching this from any mountaintop experience. I'm teaching this from being in it with you, being on the journey with you, from expanding. So, and, um, and, and so along this line, talking about habits, like we can, we can continue to do something consistently, but it doesn't mean we won't slip. Even if we've built a habit, it doesn't mean we won't slip back. So first of all, let's look at habits. Look at the idea of the small decisions and actions, small decisions that we make and the actions that we take every day. Those are going to become our habits. Those are going to become our life habits. And our life is a sum of our habits. Our life is a sum of our habits. So what are the decisions that you're making every day? What are the actions, the decisions, what are the actions that you're taking? We make a decision, then we take an action, and we keep doing it. We make a decision, we take an action, make a decision, take an action. Eventually, it becomes a habit, which means that it becomes subconscious. We don't have to add to, we don't have to do anything in order to get there. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Continually sending blessings out to you, sir. Blessings out to you, Al, to make to, uh, for successful surgery and recovery for successful surgery and recovery. So what we repeatedly do ultimately forms the person that we are. It forms the things we believe and the personality that we portray. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, sis. So good to see you. What the thing that we repeatedly do. So we gotta, we gotta look at our repetitions. What are the things that we automatically do? What do we repeatedly do? We want to begin to look at our habits. We want to start this week and look at our habits tomorrow. We're going to talk about habits and thinking. Then Wednesday, we're going to talk about habits and feelings. Thursday, we're going to talk about habits and relationships. And Friday, going to be a hodgepodge of habits, just a conversation of habits. So that's, you see a pattern, right? You see a pattern? This is my whole self-love. Um, um, these are the areas that I park in self-love. If we're talking about moving to purpose, beloved, the whole reason to love ourselves better, well, lots of reasons, but my reason is so that we can walk out this earth and live and live live our purpose, live it out fully, live it out without hesitation, live it, live it, live our live out purpose. You know, what is it that you've been put on this earth to do? Do you see? Do it now. Do it now. Do some level of it now. Do some version of it now. Do some right. Do it now. Whatever it looks like. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be. Um, and, and I'm talking, you know, I'm always talking to you. It doesn't have to be perfect, Kathy. It doesn't have to be packaged perfectly, Kathy. Do it now, right? Do it now. Whatever it is 
that is yours to do. Go on and do it. Do some version of it right now and let it be done. Let it be done. And then you'll always be, you always be, um, I'm correcting. You'll always be course correcting, if you will. You'll because as you learn more, you'll do more. You'll have more to give. But you got to get to the next level, to the next place, in order to learn more, in order to get more, in order to give more. Do you know? If you if we only stay here, right? If we only stay where we're comfortable, if we only stay in a comfort centered reality, then we'll only be able to give what we've gotten from being in this place. But when we step out of comfort into discomfort, right? out of comfort into discomfort and then um when we when we step there then we um a growth centered reality when we step into a growth centered reality then we'll have more to give because we've grown right so if you want to if we you know there then i get it i'm no no shade on folk who who for whatever reasons have chosen to live them live, live live their lives in a comfort centered reality which means that they don't intentionally put themselves in a position to grow. Because anytime we put ourselves in a position to grow, we are going to expand and increase, right? Anytime we do that, we're going to expand and increase. And so it's important that we do that. So let's see what we've got. Um, what we repeatedly do ultimately determines the person we become. Absolutely it does, absolutely it does. And so if, if whatever we continually think on, that's what we, we get the dividends of our thoughts. We get the dividends of our, 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 our words. We get the dividends of our feelings. We get the dividends, the returns, right, on our belief. We certainly get the dividends on our actions because all of those things lead to actions. We get the dividends and the beliefs of those things. Um, and wow, habits is a good place to start for this week. It is. It's why I'm starting. <laughs> I'm taking you guys on my journey. We get the journey this together. So I'm looking at my habits. And, and why am I looking at this habits? Um... Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, um, Andrea, for praying for Al. And do it now. Remember, version one is better than version none. Absolutely. Brenda's praying for Al. Thank you. Your supreme being will guide the surgeon's hands. May God control you. So, yes. Um, so, God will drive drive the surgeon's hands. We claim it in the name of Jesus and um, healing and wholeness and, 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 and restoration recovery in a way that blows everybody's mind, right? We claim it in Jesus' name. When we step out of comfort into discomfort, we step into growth. That's right. Out of comfort into discomfort equals growth. It equals growth. Now, this is the thing. Well, we can get into that, but the, the thing of it is, is we've got to continue to move while we're, in, while we're uncomfortable because we can short circuit, right? If it's so uncomfortable that sends us into a cocoon somewhere, then we can short circuit and we don't want to do that. We don't want to short circuit. And so we want to make sure that we want to make sure that we continually, um, we continually press our way into, um, out of comfort centric living, right? I don't know. Comfort is alluring and it's appetizing. Comfort in de is deceitful. Think about it like this. Think about the frog in water. You, you know, when the frog first gets in, in regular, you know, like water, they are, and, and there's no danger or anything. They just stay there. And as the water heats up, as the situation changes, as there is, you know, danger that happens as the water, right? As our life heats up, as things are changing, we just stay there because we're familiar with it. We stay there because we're comfortable. <laughs> I read a quote that says the only reason we have some relationships that we have today is because we had them yesterday. Yes, yes. The only reason we have some relationships today is because we had them yesterday. Uh, Al says, survey of our habits gives a snapshot of what we really value in our life. Whether it is intentional or not, it allows us to reevaluate our priorities as well. Amen. Amen. It does. It does. And so that's a good place to start, Al. It's a good place to start is to look at what do we value. And so this is the thing. Do we value comfort? Right. It is fire, isn't it? Isn't it, Letitia? Do we value comfort over, um, over growth? Do we value comfort over growth? Comfort over growth. And so, you know, profound quote. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Comfort over growth, beloved. Comfort over growth. So we've got to look at our habits. 
We've got to look at our habits. Our habits will tell us what we value. It will tell us what we value. Do you see? And so do I, do I value peace of mind over growth? Do I value peace of mind over growth? Because there is a, there's a, there comes a point in time in growth where you're not going to have peace in your mind, where you're not going to have things, um, all the ducks in the row, right? And so we've got to look at what it is that we value and look at all the pieces of it to see how it is determining where we go in our next day, in our next week, in our next month, in our next year. Where is it that you're going to grow? Do you see? Do you do you value do your values? Do you value comfort over growth? Right. Comfort over growth. I was looking at my habits this weekend as the self-discovery piece of self-love. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, it's one God, right? We have one God, one Holy Spirit. And um, today, and, yeah, and it's interesting because I just got really habits this morning, the idea of talking about it this morning. So God knows what it is that we need. I'm looking at my habits. And so it's the thing is, so what I said to myself, so it's interesting, right? Um, growth will lead you to sustainable peace of mind leads you to sustainable peace of peace of mind. It also, it also sustainable peace of mind. Okay. Okay. It also will growth will also lead you to an absence of peace while we're transitioning. We think about the children of Israel and they were, they were forced to grow. They were, they didn't have an absence of peace. Like there was, there was, um, the unknown, right? There was this unsettling feeling because they didn't know where their water was coming from. They didn't know where their food was coming from. They had been habituated to Egypt. And they wanted to go back to Egypt because that's what was comfortable. Well, God was requiring them to grow, to expand, to increase so that his message could, could go out into his universe, right? Into the world so that they could go and get the, the blessing that he had declared to their forefathers. But yet they were comfortable in Egypt. They were comfortable in bondage. They were comfortable in prison. They were comfortable with being there because it was going to cost them something to let go of the familiar. It was going to cost them something to let go of that which they which they knew, right? We're comfortable. We have peace when we do what we know. And when we try to go out and launch into that which we don't know, we don't have peace, beloved, right? We, there's an absence. So it costs us our peace in order to grow. It doesn't mean we won't, won't, we won't get back to a place of peace. We will, because we'll increase our muscles, we'll expand, we'll increase, and then this place will become familiar. But then God is gonna invite us again to some places of discomfort so we can grow. Do you see? So we can look that look at that through all throughout scripture. He, you know, Peter was good. He was a pillar and all that. And then he's sitting, you know, he's sitting on, on, a, on a rooftop somewhere, you know, and mesmerized and see all of these things that unclean things that he wouldn't eat. And he's saying, go, 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 go see a man. I, th I forget where he sent him to, but to Cornelius, to Cornelius's house, you know, people like, I ain't never ate that kind of stuff. And then like, yeah, but you need to go, but you need to go. Peter wasn't comfortable. He wasn't comfortable. He had to go do something because he had to grow. He had to grow in order so other people can grow, right? We need to grow so other people can grow. There's some people who will never see me, who will never listen to me, who will never know anything about me, but they'll see you. They'll listen to you. They'll know things about you. And because they see you growing, then they'll be able to grow, right? As you grow in your self-love, then they'll be able to grow in their self-love. Because this is what it's about, beloved. This message is, is, is not my message. It's not your message. It's our message. It's the world's message. Actually, it's God's message. The message of love is God's message. It's not ours. He just gives us a different way in order to have this conversation. And so it's absolutely imperative that we understand that we will be absent of peace. I certainly have been there. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm living there more and more and um, it's becoming a way of life for me. And so I'm building muscles and figuring out how to keep moving when I can't have the mental peace that I'm used to having, right? When I, when, when that is gone in, in a sense of the disruption, right? And growth, there's disruption in order to grow. When a when a, a when a, a woman is is birthing, there's disruption in her body as she gets the seed. There's some disruption as she um, incubates the seed. There's some disruption as the seed grows. There's some disruption, and certainly as there's delivery, there is disruption in order for the the baby to be born, in order to have delivery, in order for that seed to become a reality. You know, an external reality, and so we can we can. You look at that throughout life. There's disruption that's going to lead to growth. Do you see? But then the woman's body goes back, right? She works to get it back. And there's some peace. There's some normalcy, but it never goes back to the way that it was before. It can't. 
the children of Israel never could go back to, to, to the way that they were, you know, before coming out of Egypt. We can never go back. When we change, when we build our habits, right, that it becomes a, a way of life, right, then we can, we can never go back. So, um, so uh, let's see what we got there. Growth will lead you to sustainable. Good morning. Thank you for your prayers and support. You're welcome, my dear. You're welcome. So good to see you, Patricia. So good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. So true, Doc. Growth is not always comfortable. It's downright hurts. In football, we say no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. We have to be comfortable with the discomfort to grow. Amen. 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 Now this is this is Letitia Don Clark. Now this is good, sis. Love you too. Love you too. Love you too. So yeah. So yeah. The absence. The the the. Uh, so growth. Growth. So what are we, what, where are we? So we've got some, we've got some good stuff already this morning. We've got the notion of, um, we've got the idea of looking at our values. What is it that we value? Because if we value peace over growth, right? If we value um, comfort over growth, then we won't grow. And so we've got to see what we value so that we can move towards um, growing. So tomorrow we're going to look at our habits. And so... Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe in, in wholeness. We believe in health. We believe in, in your divine intervention. So we pray for our brother on um, this morning. We pray uh, for healing. We pray that you, like, um, like others have said, that you guide the hands of, of the surgeons and that you will be his ever-present help. The healing is the children's bread and Al, Al is your child. So we stand on the promises of God that are yea and amen. We declare it to be so, healing and wholeness and, and um your mighty, mighty, mighty presence, the love of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We stand on your promises, God. At the moment in which Abba gave us his breath, me and you, no matter where we are, no matter what habit we see in ourselves, no matter how much we have gone around the same mountain over and over again, we gave up the right to not be amazing because we're amazing right where we are no matter what. Right where we are, we are amazing. Right where we are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Have an amazing day.